So despite the fact that it happened last year in Mayakoba in Cancun, the Matt Kuchar caddy story still continues to have legs. I remember when it first happened, you had Jim Rome epically talk about how the caddy was really getting the short end of the stick for this win. And he felt, like many others felt, that what the caddy was asking for was justified. Let me tell you something. That kind of money would change that guy's life. The kind of money that anybody else would have made absolutely would change that guy's life. And maybe not just his life, maybe his kids' lives too. I mean, wouldn't you like that to be the story? Wouldn't that be a great story? I found this guy. He was a weekly caddy. I got my first win in four years. I chipped him off the 10% that everybody gets, and my man bought a house. Yeah, and that's definitely true. Like, But the reality is, Kuchar's caddy was not there at the event. He was sick. And the 10% that's customary, Kuchar absolutely does pay him. So when he met, went to Mayakoba, he did find uh, a day caddy, and they agreed upon four grand. And then he won the tournament, and he did give him a thousand bonus. So it definitely is not on the generous side, but it, I mean, it, it's permissible, but I understand where Jim Rome and a lot of the commentators are coming from. You know, I think that because he does live in an economically uh, deprived area in a third world country, that he is given a different level of, um, you know, economic incentive to do his job. And if it had been in the States or in Asia or in like another kind of first world country, I think that the consideration would have been different. When they asked him about it on Golf Channel, he said the exact quote was, you know, these guys are making next to nothing. So for $5,000, you know, he's going to be the envy of all his buddies. And for someone that's earned tens of millions – to be saying that kind of dismissively, uh, they didn't get him on camera saying it, but it was given to a reporter. It just comes off poorly, especially when, you know, these are entertainers and we're supposed to be liking them as people. And, you know, athletes are supposed to be charitable. And certainly the PGA Tour is charitable with the hundreds of millions that they raise for regional charities for all the tournaments that span the U.S. and the world. So it was interesting to see how Matt Kuchar's stock just took a dive because the narrative for him was for the longest time that he's a really good guy. You know, at the Ryder Cup, he's given high fives and being supportive. And from outside the ropes, you're seeing that this is a really good guy. But it was also interesting to see because we're now not able to really see players' perceptions of you know, Matt or various other players besides Tiger, we get a glimpse of how people kind of for many years viewed Tiger coldly, but kind of less so now. Um, but the digs started to begin. So we had this epic one from Phil as he drove down Magnolia Lane. And on the weekend of the Masters driving up Magnolia Lane, I've got a great pairing today with Matt Kuchar. Obviously, we're not going to have any side action today because uh, I'd probably see like 0.06% if I did win. But we're going to have a great day. I love his caddy, Woody. And wearing all black, being aggressive. You know, so to, to reference the caddy, to reference that, yeah, he pays, what, 5000 was 0. 0.00, like he referenced, you know, two or something of the million plus that he won that week. Um, and Phil's known for being ruthless with some of his digs and you know everyone knows that phil's kind of disingenuous when it comes to the betting action you know he'll say he doesn't bet but and even in his videos like he interviewed podrick harrington and podrick almost let it slip that you know he'd been betting with phil on the course or that a group of them had been betting but 
he's like, he kind of gave him like a look, like we're not supposed to be talking about that. So Phil has this whole media image that he's, you know, working really hard to reserve. But the fact that he gave a little dig in there for a while was like an earthquake until this atomic bomb went off earlier this year. Still mad. I mean, Roy was just telling me, passing by two points. Two points is three hundred thousand dollars over two points. Uh, I don't know what money means to him. So. <laughs> I think the O's in the background and seeing the looks of uh, the other players after that was said, specifically Brooks Kepka, like says it all that everyone knows what happened and is very cognizant of the perception of <laughs> of Kucher. But he took it in stride, and you can see that he was definitely stressing out. And, you know, he's wiggling around, kind of what, not knowing what to say and just looking very uncomfortable. And then the audience, you know, reacting negatively that, you know, they're feeling all uncomfortable, too. So is Kucher worthy or is the amount of scrutiny that he's getting warranted? If you look up Matt Kucher, the number one result is Matt Kuchar caddy. So the story is even being bigger than him as a personality. He's kind of the result and like his sort of arrogance is sort of as or asymptomatic of the type of privilege and the image of golf that I think a lot of golfers don't want to put out there that these are, you know, entitled millionaires that don't care about other people that are country club kids and didn't have to put in the grind that people ascribe to Tiger and then absolutely Tiger did. And so the whole, the whole perception about PGA Tour sans Tiger has been really perpetuated by Matt Kuchar. And I didn't see him really recovering, you know, at the Masters. You know, it's just, he just, he didn't really talk to anyone. Like I, you know, people would try to question him and you could just see that he was just not having any of it because he was reeling. You know, I'm sure the criticism that he's getting from the fellow players and the media, and he has to re communicate statements. And then he has his PR people who should be fired and then, you know, have to do damage control. So it was a bad situation. And I'm sure Kucher's sponsorship renegotiations didn't go quite as well as he may have hoped. So in the future, yeah, you know, paying someone less because there are demanding of less is permissible, but it's good to break someone off, you know, a, a little more than $5,000 if they're helping you along, especially if they have a, a, an intimate knowledge of the local course like he did have. And for an opportunity like that to come around for him, there's not going to be that many more for him as a journeyman caddy. And to take the awareness of the moment and appreciate his role in it as a caddy. And yeah, as Jim Rome was saying, make the narrative being the caddy getting this windfall. And isn't Kutcher a good guy? And I'm sure whatever he lost in that tip would be more than made back in terms of sponsorships based on the increased good guy image that Matt Kuchar would put out there based on this narrative.